how to unlock and lock a door in Arma 3 with keys. In two previous tutorials, we have looked at how to interact with objects through the use of a hold action action. This time, we want to add an action to the action menu, often referred to as the scroll menu, which can then unlock and lock a chosen door if we have keys in the inventory. For an easier overview between the various actions, we will refer to this specific action type as scroll actions throughout the tutorial. Let us first take a look on the three main differences between a scroll action and a hold action. One of the differences between a hold action and a scroll action is that with the hold action, the player needs to hold down a key over a period to activate it. But with the scroll action, one has to just click the activation key once to activate it. Another difference between the two actions is that the hold action has four different script activations within its setup. One for when the player starts holding down the action, one for every tick the action is held down, one for when the action is finished, and one for if the player stops holding down the action. Meanwhile, the scroll action only activates its script once, and that is when one clicks the activation button. The last significant difference one should know about is that the hold action has two condition fields, one for it to be shown and one for it to continue. While the scroll action has only one condition field, that is both for being shown and activated. A hold action, would I say, is appropriate for situations where you want the player to spend some time because immersion, like maybe download a file or search a body. Scroll actions are better used for quicker actions, like unlocking a door or turning something on or off. Now, I have a holding area here, and for those who are interested, this is a composition made by Kayo, and a link to that can be found in the description. I want players to be able to lock and unlock the cage door, so people can't escape this place. I also want the players to need to have a key in their inventory to be able to lock and unlock the door. And that's the plan for the script we are going to set up, so let's start. The first thing we want to do is give the building we're going to use a variable name so we can reference it later. Here, I have chosen to name it Cage Door. The next step is to create an SQF file in our mission folder. I'm going to name it Add Actions, but you can name it whatever you want. Then, we open this file and inside we are going to place the following code. Target, Title, Script, Arguments, Priority, Show Window, hide on use, shortcut, condition, radius, unconscious, selection, memory point, remote exec, add action, zero, target. Now, target is the object to which the action will be added. This may be a unit, vehicle, or a static object. Simple objects and agents are not valid targets for adding actions. Title is the text that will appear in the action menu and possibly on the screen, indicating the action is available to the player. Next, we have script, where we define what will happen when the action is triggered. For example, we can call a function, spawn a script, or place the raw code here. There are four parameters we can use to make things easier for us. Underscore. This selects zero scopes to the object the action is assigned to. Underscore. This select one scopes to the caller of the action. Underscore. This select two scopes to the action ID. Underscore. This select three scopes to the argument set in the next parameter of the script. After the script, we have arguments which are passed to the script and can be selected with underscore this select three. Priority determines the action's order in the action list. A higher priority means the action will appear higher up and be pushed on the screen when looking at the object. If two actions have the same priority, the newest action will appear below the older one. The value can be a negative number and include decimals. Show window is a Boolean parameter that can be either true or false. 
with true as the default. When true, the action will be displayed on the screen with its title when available. If false, the action is only shown in the scroll menu. Hide on use is also a Boolean parameter, true by default. When true, the scroll menu will be hidden if the action is activated. If false, the menu will remain open and the action will be highlighted after activation. Shortcut allows you to assign a specific key action to this action. For example, if you write down compass here, then when the players meet the condition for performing this action and press their keyboard key for the compass, the action will be triggered. Condition sets the requirements for when the action can be shown and activated, with the default value being true. For the action to be displayed, the condition must return true. Four arguments can assist in defining conditions. Underscore target scopes to the object the action is assigned to. If the object is a unit inside a vehicle, the vehicle becomes underscore target. Underscore this scopes to the player who has this action registered to them. Underscore original target scopes to the object the action is initially assigned to. Unlike target, this scope does not change if the object is a unit inside a vehicle. It still scopes to the unit. Underscore action ID returns the action ID. Radius is the distance between the activating player's position and the object's position, with a hard-coded maximum limit of 50 meters. Unconscious is a Boolean parameter. False by default. If false, this action will not be shown to units who are incapacitated. Selection specifies the object's geometric level of detail, LOD, where the action will be placed. Memory point specifies the object's memory level of detail, where the action will be placed. Then we have the remote exec command, which executes an order with the option to set its targets and whether the order will be sent to the join in progress, JIP Q. We use this command because add action has a local effect. If we had only called this on the server like with this setup and it was a dedicated server, nobody would be able to use it. So we have set add action as the order, then the target is zero since we want everyone to have this action, and we have set the target as the order's join in progress ID in the queue. We want this action to be added to the queue so that players who join later will be able to use this action too. So let's fill this code out. We want the building we placed as our target, so we insert the object's variable name in the target field, naming it cage door. Next, we want the action's title to be unlock door, so we put this text in the title field. Then, for the script, to simplify, we'll first define the parameters. Next, we're going to create an array of all the items in the player's inventory. Normally, one might use the items command, but since keys are considered magazines for some reasons, we need to use items with magazines to get a list of all the items the player has in their inventory. After that, we make an if-then statement. If the condition returns true, the code inside the then field will be executed. We want this code to trigger if the player has a key in their inventory, so we'll write a condition like this. Keys in underscore items. This code checks if keys are in the list. If the player has an item matching this string, then the condition returns true, and the then field is executed. Otherwise, nothing happens. Inside the then field, we want to unlock the door. We can achieve this through a specific variable, which is biz disabled door number. The number indicates which door we want to lock, unlock. We can find this by double left clicking the object in the editor and scrolling down to the door section. Here we see we only have one door and its number is 1. You connect the number on the door with the number in the parameter. So the variable we'll use is bias disabled door 1. But we're not finished here because to lock or unlock, we need to assign a value. A locked door has the value 1, and an unlocked door has the value 0. Since we want to unlock the door, we'll write the variable like this, biz disabled door 1, 0. However, this action has a local effect, and the variable will also only be set locally. 
We want this to be set globally so that everyone experiences the same effect. Therefore, we need to broadcast it globally, which we can do by adding true at the end. BIS disabled door 1 0 true. Then we use the set variable command to set this variable, with our target being the object, so we can use the target parameter. So the code will look like this target set variable bis disabled door 1 0 true. Now when the action is activated, the door will unlock. I also add a silent hint to this field so the player knows that the door has been unlocked. I call it through remote exec, targeting only the caller. Then we're finished with the script part. Since we don't have any other arguments, we set it to nil. We want this action to have priority over opening the door, so we set the priority to 12. This action will then appear above the open door action in the scroll menu, and its text will be the first scene when interacting with the building. We want this action to be shown on the screen, not hidden in just the scroll menu, so we set the parameter show on screen to true. Then, we want this action to be hidden upon use, so we also set it to true. We don't want any shortcut, so we'll leave that empty. We want this action to be shown only if the door is locked. We can check this by verifying if the value of the variable buzz disabled door 1 is not 0. If it's not, then the door is not unlocked. Thus, we set up this code. Underscore target get variable bis disabled door 1 not equal 0. So, when someone unlocks the door, this action will be hidden. We want the player to be realistically close enough to the door to interact with it, so we set the radius to 2. We also don't want unconscious players to be able to interact with the door in that state, so we set it to false. And we can end here. We don't need to fill out the rest. The rest is only necessary if we want the action to be shown only on a specific part, like a door, for example. But our object here is small enough that the interaction field will be around the door, so we can mostly ignore this. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to complete the process by filling out the rest. To do this, we need to know the selections of the object. This can be discovered with the following code. Underscore selections, selection names, cage door, copy, to clipboard, str underscore selections. Drop this code into the debug console and execute it with the local exec button. This will give us a list of all the selections for the object. From here we find that there is only one door selection, named door1. Now that we've determined the sections this building has, we can specify the section we want to interact with in the selection field. Therefore, we input door1 as the selection. And now the setup is ready. The only thing now is that we need to call this code. We will call this code through the init server of SQF file, and as always, if you don't have it, make it. Here we insert the following command execvm add actions sqf. This command will compile and execute the script. Since we've created the script file inside the mission folder, there's no need for any folder path. If we wish to add an action to lock the door, we simply open that file again, copy the entire code, and paste it right under the previous code. Then, we change the text from unlock to lock, and adjust the value after the variable bis disabled door 1 from 0 to 1. In the condition, we set it so the value should not be 1. Lastly, we change the hint from you unlocked the door to you locked the door. And that's it. I hope you now understand how to add an action to an object, how to check your inventory for an item, and how to have an action show up on a specific sections of an object. Thank you for watching. If you have questions, or want more information, feel free to leave a comment about it.